Hey guys, it's Patrick Hall with F-Stoppers, and I personally believe that wedding photographers have one of the hardest jobs out there. We rarely have control over the locations that we have to shoot in, and many times we've never been to that specific venue. We also have to be prepared to light in any sort of situation that we're thrown in, whether it be hard direct sunlight, overcast light, color cast light, nighttime city light, and sometimes no light at all. And if we're shooting a bridal shoot or a bride on the actual day of the wedding, we rarely have any time to mess with our lighting. So I've teamed up with Profoto to share six of my favorite lighting setups for all of you on location portrait and wedding photographers. In this video, I'm gonna show you three of my favorite setups and tomorrow, August 8th at 11 a.m. Eastern, I will share my final three setups live on Profoto's Geared Up with Chris Fain. To watch it live, click on the link in the description, and if you miss the live broadcast, don't worry, you can always watch the entire show from the link below as well. So sit back and enjoy the first three lighting setups that I love to use anytime I'm shooting a bride out on location. Now when I'm shooting a wedding, my favorite light modifier that I have with me at all times is always a softbox. It always looks great on everybody and it fills in all the shadows. It's just, I think, my go-to lighting setup. But sometimes I like to bring a strip box. This is the Profoto OCF softbox. It's a one by three, so it's one foot by three feet long. It gives us a few other options. And what I love about the setup is I can use the A2 along with this OCF2 adapter and I can use any of the light modifiers I already own. So no matter what speed ring you have by Profoto, if you have the click system or if you have some of the older speed rings like we have, it's going to allow you to use this tiny little flash system with all of the strip boxes, soft boxes, octa boxes that you already own. So that's a huge benefit. And what's great about this is you can really feather the light in a way. Let me explain this to you. I could put the light sideways so that I have some light coming from above, but then I also have some light kind of coming around the side. And instead of putting this behind somebody like you might traditionally do with a strip box, I'm gonna place this really close to our bride. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a really nice headshot sort of feel that you're getting out on location. Now, before I take this photo, let me just show you what a lot of people do and what I used to do years ago, is I would put the light a little further away, I would turn it up in power, and then if I take a shot here, let me show you what this does. So as you can see here, the light is doing two things that I don't particularly like. One, because it's so far away, it's lighting up our scene evenly and it's just not creating really nice shadows and highlights. And two, because the softbox is relatively far away, I mean, we're still talking four feet away, it's creating much harder light than I think you might imagine. It's still a softbox, but it's appearing to be a little harder than what it really should be. So in order to solve both of these problems, I'm gonna bring this strip box a lot closer. I mean, I'm talking 12 inches away. And because it's gonna be set much lower because it's so much closer to our subject, I'm gonna set this to level five. It's not gonna be blinding when we take any photos. So now let's take a few shots and compare this with the image I just took. And as you can see, this is very whimsical. It's very soft. It almost looks like natural light. Nothing about this screams flash photography because the light is so soft. But if I show this to a bride and they get to see their face filled in with that soft light, they're gonna love it. So inevitably as a wedding photographer, you're gonna have to work with whatever's around the venue. And sometimes all you might have is a cool wall. And so it's really important to know how to make the most out of that situation. I'm gonna shoot natural light to show you what this shot could look like if we just used the overcast light here. We also have this big tree that's blocking some light, but I think with a little bit of strobe, we're gonna be able to make this shot pop a little bit more. So for this shot, because this castle wall is so big, I'm gonna to try to shoot fairly wide, knowing that I can always crop in. But let's go ahead and take a wide shot and just show you what the natural light looks like. And my camera settings, just for reference, I'm shooting at one 200th of a second, F4, and then I'm at ISO 50. So as you can see, this shot with natural light doesn't look too bad. And I think in Lightroom, I can actually pull out a lot of detail. And if you start dodging and burning, you could make this look incredible. But if I add a light, I can make this look a lot more dramatic and more interesting. So the easiest way to add this lighting effect would be to just use a strobe. So I'm gonna use the Profoto A2. I'm gonna set it off to the side and just fire this thing bare bulb at our subject and see if we can get her looking really good. So I'm gonna have my assistant, Jean, just hold this light up on a stand. This makes it really easy to be mobile. And let's just take a shot with the strobe added. 
And as you can see now, we have way more detail on our bride, but the light is going kind of everywhere. It's not really what I wanted to do, but I have to say this shot does look really nice. So in order to get the light only spilling on our bride, I'm gonna go ahead and put the click magnum on top of this flash. Hand this to Gene there. And because the click magnum adds a stop of power, I'm gonna have to turn my flash down from level eight to level seven. Let's go with seven. Let's go ahead and take a shot here. So as you can see now, she pops right out of the image. This looks great. We probably could accomplish this in post-production, but if you're shooting a wedding, you don't wanna to have to go through and start editing every picture to get this effect. It's so much easier to do this with light. I think if we add the Click Magnum 20 degree grid on top of this, we can even narrow this beam more and make it look a little more dramatic. So I'm gonna keep my power setting the same. And now as you can see with these handful of shots, we have really narrowed the light down. I think this looks super trendy and dynamic. And this is the type of shot that your bride can't really visualize out here because the natural light is so bright. And so when you show the bride the back of the camera or that final wedding album and you have an image like this, it just stands out so much more. It looks so much more professional. And these are the type of images that I like to create on a wedding day. Sometimes you find yourself at a wedding with a really cool opportunity like this, where you have these crazy rocks, you have the ocean, you have the setting sun, and you wanna do something really dramatic. In many cases, you need to shoot wide to kind of show the scene, and so you're not necessarily gonna use a soft light. Instead, you're gonna use a hard light. Well, I have right here, this is the brand new Click Fresnel. I've actually never used this on location before, so I'm really excited to test this out. I've shot this in the studio, and the whole idea is that this is going to focus the light, give you a little bit more power, but it's gonna give you kind of that old Hollywood look. So if you don't wanna carry around a big reflector dish, which sometimes is hard to pack in your bag, it doesn't get any smaller than this Fresnel. Now, we're not really supposed to take a photo out here on these rocks, but we just talked to the security guard and she said, if we can do this shot in five minutes, it's gonna be okay. So not only is this a lesson on how to light on location, but also how to get the shot incredibly quick because at a wedding, you might only have five minutes. So one thing with hard light, especially using this Fresnel, is you do need to make sure the shadows are falling in a flattering way. If the light's too far off to the side, you're gonna get these weird shadows like I have in this image. But if we can wrap the light around just a little bit and get it really 45 degrees, the light's gonna look so much better. This is where it helps to have a really tall light stand. The goal is to have the light above your model at all times, but when you're on a slope and your assistant is at the bottom, you gotta get that light high. And then Adaris, look kind of out like you were, but make eye contact here. Yep, right there, right there. Put the arm in front and grab the wrist. Yep, right there, perfect, and smile. All right, so the key with this is being really quick, but then also making sure you get the light in the perfect position so that the hard light that creates shadows are flattering and they're not creating super hard shadows on the side of her face. The natural light shots look pretty nice, but because the sun is so far behind her, it's really rimming her out and there's not a lot of natural light falling on her face. So I think you could use this image in a pinch, but if you compare this natural light shot to the ones we just did with the flash, I mean, these are portfolio worthy. So there you go, three simple on-location lighting setups that you can use when shooting anybody, but especially brides. If you wanna see the three final lighting setups, tune in live tomorrow, August 8th at 11 a.m. I'm gonna be on Pro Photos Geared Up with Chris Fain. If you happen to miss it, you can still go to the link in the description below. I'm also gonna release the final three setups on F-Stopper's channel in a few days, so be on the lookout for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you very soon.